It's highly contagious and it kills unvaccinated puppies at an alarming rate. This is all about parvovirus. In the wintertime, when unsterilized dogs give birth the most, this virus spreads through the stray population like wildfire. The survival rate on the street is close to zero, but with veterinary care and close attention, puppies have a pretty good chance of making it through. Parvo is a virus that infects the intestinal tract of young pups. It's shed in the feces and is highly contagious. Early vaccination is vital to prevent your puppy from contracting the virus. But if they are already sick, have a high parasite burden, are malnourished, or they are born from an unvaccinated mother, they may still be susceptible, even if vaccinated. Since it's so contagious, the best way to prevent your puppy from contracting parvo is to stay away from high traffic areas until they're fully vaccinated. High traffic areas are streets with stray dogs, dog hotels, or dog parks. To socialize young puppies, you can arrange play dates with already fully vaccinated dogs. But if your pup has already been exposed, what should you watch out for? The initial symptoms of parvo are unusual sleepiness, depression, not eating. These symptoms are followed by loose motions or diarrhea, which is often bloody and super smelly, and vomiting. Then as the infection develops, your puppy will start to get fever, abdominal pain, and dehydration. Because they're losing so much fluid through vomiting and diarrhea, your puppy will become dehydrated and can die within a day or two. If your puppy shows any of these initial symptoms, make sure you head straight to the vet. Once your vet diagnoses your puppy with parvo, they will recommend fluids to be given IV to help maintain their hydration and glucose levels. Ideally, your puppy will stay at the hospital and have continuous fluids for the first 24 to 48 hours. If you don't have access to a hospital that keeps inpatients, you'll need to take your puppy to the vet at least twice a day for fluids. They will likely give normal saline with dextrose and something like metronidazole to help combat the virus. In addition to the treatment, your puppy will need to be isolated from other dogs so they don't pass on the virus. All waste, bedding, and even your clothing should be kept separate from other dogs. If you have access to them, you can even use gowns to cover your clothes and shoe covers to prevent contamination. Anything that your puppy has come into contact with should be disposed of or bleached twice and completely dried before using it again. Your pup will need to be cleaned regularly so they don't become covered in vomit and feces. All surfaces and floors should be cleaned with bleach since no other disinfectant can kill parvo effectively. If your pup goes outside while contaminated with parvo, that area should be off limits to unvaccinated puppies for at least six months. And most importantly, wash your hands. Once your puppy's condition becomes stable, you can switch to subcutaneous fluids instead of IV. This is much easier to learn and can be done at home. Once your pup is able to eat without vomiting, you can give them a gentle fluid diet and unflavored ORS salts to help rehydrate them. If your pup continues to improve, you can add in bland solid food and then switch back to their normal diet once they're fully recovered. Parvo is heartbreaking, but it can be prevented. Please vaccinate your puppies and dogs, keep small puppies away from unvaccinated dogs, and most importantly, give vaccines to your strays. Please share this video to spread this life-saving information.